Uh, and then this week we have a special interview, special guest. Sure. You're going to interview engineer to engineer. That's right. The Open MV project. A lot of people know about this. There's a Kickstarter right now. Yes. And a lot of people who know Adafruit know this is a little bit of a surprise. We generally don't cover Kickstarters. We don't do a lot with them, but we have recently. Yeah. So the reason is a long time ago, there was a lot of hard work, Kickstarters and crowdfunding. And it was really tough on the backers and even the creators to be yeah. able to ship a hardware project. So now, um, but we want to help people. And a lot of folks base uh, their their Kickstarters or whatever off Adafruit designs. So what we decided to do is let's uh, make sure we meet the makers. Let's uh, make sure that we have confidence in it. Let's make sure we're an actual backer. And then let's make sure it's like a good cause, good business, good good mission, all that stuff. So the last one was uh, Particle. Yeah. We did with the Tachyon, and that was a lot of fun. And now OpenMV, which is really popular in Python circles and machine That's learning right, machine learning. Corbana, so, uh, welcome. Hey, Hello. how are you doing, everybody? Hello. Okay, so my first question is, is there anybody else at OpenMV, or are you like the lead no, everything? No, we go to the team page. There's a team page. Oh, no, we have a team page. Um, for yeah, this particular cool. OpenMV project, um, yeah. it's me and my co-founder, Ibrahim. So we've been doing this now for 10 plus years. And uh, I actually went full time on OpenMV two years ago. So this Congrats. is the only thing I'm doing now. It was a science. People ask more of the same question. They're like, is it just you? And she's like, no, there's like 100 people. No, I mean, like, you're, you're just doing so much media tour. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know any other things associated with OpenMV. Um, yeah, I went to the page and you have a, uh, you have a crew. OK. So you yeah, have full time. Yeah, no, uh, like Damian George from MicroPython, he's been helping out. Um, both of the oh, Python great. ports for both the, um, uh, on our two new OpenMV cams, we got two new processor architectures. and so. We've actually been working hard to make sure these actually get upstreamed into MicroPython so that everybody can use them. We're in the same, stuff. we're in the same upstream and boat. Yeah. Um, with CircuitPython, we, we do the same. We make sure whatever changes we make, because we're all building off this like great core. And how can we get really far with the things like we want to teach people stuff? You want to do vision, MicroPython by itself. That's not what it was designed for. So that's great that you've got like. Damien, and you've got um, who, who else is on your on your crew? Uh, we got a guy named George. Um, he helps out of 3D CAD, uh, and so he's like really leveled up our game. Thanks to him, we're able to do like slick 3D renders and actually nice. like design cases for our stuff now. For example, this yeah. is the like movie cam AE3. And yeah, I was going to ask about that. Good work. We're just getting to that ourselves. We're like, oh, we'll do like 3D cases for a lot of our. Yeah, um, there you go. Okay, it's in focus now. Yeah, that's a sweet injection molded case. Um, and so he actually is really experienced with that and, and helps us out. And so like, you know, previously, let me just see if it's going to go by. There you go. Um, yeah, no, we, we didn't have any support for this stuff before. I'm not a CAD engineer. And so it's like, I didn't know what I was doing. And so it's awesome to have him part of the crew because uh, we're going to have an outdoor case now, uh, adding cases for all of the things for the OpenMV Cam A3. And then we did a whole set of 3D printable cases and covers for everything else we sell so that you know folks can just buy our stuff and then build it into a project and not worry about, oh, is this gonna short or anything like that? Yeah, do the same thing. Okay. All right, so let's um, start it off with the most important thing. We'll do the TLDR. Where can people back the Kickstarter? Do Kickstarter and search for OpenMV, is that the fastest way? Uh, yeah, yeah, search for the, uh, you can go to our website. There's a giant link on our website. There's a link on our forums. We've got an ad on our website. What's the uh, website address for those? Uh, let me paste that into uh, the yeah, chat. Yeah. Actually, boom. OK, so that's our Kickstarter in the chat. And okay. uh, yeah, you just go to Kickstarter and Google uh, OpenMV N6 uh, and A3. All right. Okay. And I have a 54-second um, video from your Kickstarter. So after you and Lamore are talking a little bit, make sure we save in one minute, because um, okay. I want to make sure you get your 54 seconds because uh, the Kickstarter videos are very oh, check out my video. Check out the new ad I put up. Um, I actually, it, uh, I wonder if I can play that from my computer. It's pretty sweet. You might be able to. This is the one I grabbed off YouTube that was posted like a few days ago. Oh, yeah. I just posted one, um, yeah, yesterday. Actually. Okay, this might be it. Okay. You know what? Tell you what. Why don't I play this and see what happens? It's only 54 seconds, okay. and then you all just jump in. All right, in. cool. All right, get to good. Because if this is, this will explain a lot of the works I know. Out. Okay, let's do it. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good intro. So, yeah. so, okay. So there's two, there's two new cameras. Uh -huh. Are they both based on the same chip or are they two separate chipsets? No, two separate chips. So okay. we've got the OpenMVCam 83, which is based on the Aleph Ensemble processor. And so this is a chip a lot of folks haven't heard about. It's from a I've never heard of this chip. Yeah. What, like, what core is it? Like, who makes uh, it's it? A, <laughs> it's a Cortex M55 is... and it's AI accelerator on board is this thing called the ARM Ethos U55 from ARM. And so it's basically like the, the chip, if you want to experience all the stuff that ARM was developing, it's their kind of, you know, pride and joy, I guess, in that way. One of the really yeah. awesome features of it, though, is it has about 13 megabytes of RAM on chip. Wow. And so this really changes the game with MicroPython because we have a heap that's just four megabytes. Yeah. Basically. So now you can just allocate massive data structures, i.e. your, you know, AI outputs and just play around with them. And so it kind of like brings desktop level computing in Python basically, but to a microcontroller. And that chip is about six by seven millimeters. So super, yeah. super tiny. But here's the kicker. Uh, when I mentioned we were upstreaming MicroPython support. Um, so everybody's gonna be able to build a board based on this chip once we finish releasing the port, which Damien is working on right now. Um, all the AI stuff, we're keeping that in our code base, but general like IOPEN support and most of the demons which there were a lot of, have been already been fought through, and that's going to be made publicly available and MIT licensed um, mm -hmm. in MicroPython, actually. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so for, we for, just, oh, sorry. Um, we just hit 600 boards in CircuitPython. So one of the things we noticed that if you make something that other people yeah. can make, that mm -hmm. will make your, like, ecosystem. Sorry, you are saying. That's fine. Um, so for this, this um, AE processor, so you said that there, so it's it's a it's got the Cortex M55, it's got a, a ton of RAM, mm -hmm. but you said there's also like an AI coprocessor. So what what like people say that, but it means a whole like every AI processor is a little different. <laughs> what does this coprocessor let you do? Like what's it so good at? Uh yeah, yeah. So the basic way is you know the TensorFlow light for microcontrollers library? Yeah. So it just plugs into that and you go 200 x faster. That's basically yeah. what it is. So like something that would take uh, I, I, a point would be on our H7 Plus, our previous gen, you get about 0 0.6 frames a second running the YOLO model, and then that goes at 30 FPS. And the power consumption of the whole system went from 180 milliampers down to 60. So yeah. you get a 3x power consumption drop, and then, you know, 30x performance improvement. What, so what was the new frame per second for our name? Like uh, 0 0.6 to 30. 30. Okay, so it's like real time you know, YOLO modeling, the yeah, model, yeah. running on like the, what, like 320 by 240 image? What's the resolution? Uh, YOLO was, two, uh, it was a VGA. So you just do 640 by 480. And then it's, it's, it's actually downsampled to 224 yeah. by 224. And here's the crazy thing. Okay, Aleph has two Cortex M55 processors that have vector instructions. So they can do 128 bits per clock in processing. Then it's also got a GPU. So there's a GPU that can do image scaling for you. So you don't even do that with the CPU anymore. Yeah. Then it's got the 13 megabytes of RAM. Then it also has five megabytes of MRAM, which is like basically flash, but has faster read, has faster yeah. erase and write. Um, and then also it has a second core complex that offers an additional neural network processor, a second Cortex M55 and et cetera. So it's like a really, really fantastic chip. Who, who did the um, whatever, like the binary integration to TensorFlow for microcontrollers? Was it this chip company or was it? Uh, no, that's ARM actually, okay. um, because it uses the standard ARM Ethos uh, uh, U55 processor. ARM did the integration and you just have to give it settings on like what addresses are in the in, the, in, your, in your code where things are located. But otherwise, uh, it basically worked out of the box. There, there were a few critical bugs that we had to like talk with Aleph about, but other than that, um, it wasn't too scary. Like we got it working within basically a couple of days, actually. Okay. And then for the other chip, you you you're using what the H two STM H two chip? Uh, no, no, not H two. It's the N six. So it's the STM. N six. Sorry, N6. sorry. It's, there's so many numbers. Okay, so it's the N six. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the H two for something else. Um, yeah. The N six. And what's what's great about this chip? Uh, so the N six is ST's like uh, pride and joy. Uh, hold on, let me see if it's uh, coming in view. Uh, it's the black red thing. There we go. Um, yeah, so the N6 actually is a lot more powerful than the Aleph chip. So uh, basically, ST is a 3x faster uh, NPU or neural processing unit on it. Um, the core is also at 800 megahertz versus 400. So like, you know, these microcontrollers are getting fast. They're basically putting up, you know, application processor speeds now. And it's what's really cool is again, we're still in MicroPython. You can run Circuit Python on this also. And you know, now you're like at a desktop level speed basically. 
uh, but it's still an embedded system. Uh, the N6 though can have external RAM, so up to 64 megabytes actually, which means like, yeah, you can do you know serious frame buffers. It's still got that LCD output, so you can drive like a big LCD from it if you wanted to. Um, and then also it's got H.264 video compression. So like, if you remember the original Raspberry Pi um, and being able to like do video encoding, it has all those same features. So it has the ability to like take camera input, um, handle up to five megapixel cameras in hardware, and then send that to an H.264 video compressor and then even gigabit ethernet on board. So it can actually stream out data over gigabit ethernet and then run AI on it too. So it's yeah. like, they, they put everything on this chip. It's pretty incredible also. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like really designed for, it's interesting that there's, there's, there's been a lot of interest in video recognition off network, you know, um, edge, what they call edge AI, because it's, look, I don't want to say nothing else really works, but nothing else really worked that well. Um, but mm -hmm. the video stuff was actually pretty useful, like detecting uh, motion, detecting faces, detecting activity, but not needing to have internet access and like streaming video to some cloud-based um, video recognition service. So it um, sounds like these chips were like kind of made for you. Or did, did ST uh, <laughs> came to you and Did say, you fill hey, out one of those surveys? <laughs> no, no, we actually, so we knew about the N6 back in 2019 before COVID actually. It's been, it's been cooking for a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's just been that, uh, well, I probably shouldn't, say that publicly but whatever um no it's it's been cooking for a long time uh you no, know, and we have pre-release information too obviously they, they they tell people about the chip years before the chip exists. yeah no, they've been working on it for a long time and i'm glad it's here finally um no they uh, it's i think st um realized this i mean aleph was also started around that same time uh they're a startup compared to st and so um i think there was just this idea that you know folks were doing ml and they're recognizing okay like you know these microcontrollers got to go faster how can you make yeah. them go faster? And I, I think that's just, you know, all the engineering effort was put in. It takes forever to design new chips with new processes. And we're happy to see they're finally here. And, you know, these chips are so complicated, right? They also spend years debugging them. So like there were earlier versions of these chips around, but it's just like, you don't want to touch that. You yeah, know? now it's ready for release. Okay, cool. <laughs> so for the Kickstarter um, right now, what's the uh, bundle that you think folks should pick up and why? What do they get? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got both the N6 and A3 combined for $200. That's what we'd recommend you try out. Um, that gets you kind of both of the best options there because um, the N6 is going to be your higher end, flexible open MV cam standard package. So removable camera sensors, this means you can put on there a FLIR lepton for thermal imaging, or we've actually got support now for something called the FLIR boson, which does high resolution uh, thermal imaging. And so that was in our video. That's super cool. People love it because it's high FPS, high resolution thermal. Very expensive though. But if you have the money, it's like a really fun toy. Um, and then we also have something called an event camera, which can like see motion. So event cameras don't see anything but when pixels change. And like we're kind of bringing this to the hobbyist level community. The price yeah. is still a little bit high, but um, comparatively, they used to be thousands of dollars for these yeah, sensors. Yeah, yeah. And so we got it into the hundreds of dollars and, and also where you can just buy it without a salesman appearing and trying to negotiate the transaction. Yeah. And then uh, we also have a dual thermal and uh, color camera also going to be in stock. So you can do like thermal overlaid on color. And those are all um, the add-ons if folks want to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then for the AE3, that's just going to be by itself in a case, super small. Uh, but the benefit there is we've got the uh, SparkFun QWIC connector, which can also connect into Adafruit's ST Emma line. Yeah. So you've got that. Um, and yeah, I mean, these are going to be really fun devices for people to just to add strong AI to whatever they want to. Awesome. Love the edge AI. And the, uh, the headline is Python programmable AI cameras. Is that mm -hmm. the like, cause you have yeah. to, cause I was trying to think like, what is, cause we do a Python on hardware newsletter and we have read your stuff for a while. Um, it does seem like if you want to do anything with AI on the edge or not have a cloud service constantly, this is the best way, place and way to start. And if you know Python, you're already yeah. like 80% of the way there too. Oh yeah, absolutely. And one of the really cool things that we have going on is um, we really embrace this new library called ULab that someone brought something called NumPy for micro, it's a NumPy yeah. library, it's like Python's um, data processing library. And so yeah. we've got that running on board the systems now. And what's awesome about that is thanks to like the huge amount of RAM you got on board, you can literally just do Oh, I want to create a giant array, do all my crazy mathematics or take my iPython notebook and put it on the system. 
you're going to be able to more flexibly like go between you know desktop code and to the microcontroller basically right cool okay right on all, all right. right well come back on show and tells and give us updates as you're shipping and then um we're going to get the word out and try to uh see this get into the hands of a ton of people all right thank, thank you so much for coming by yeah all, all right, right. Thank, thank you, you. Better, if you want to pick one up when yeah. they run out. yeah we did the, the 200 dollars oh. here yeah so. yeah okay cool okay. sweet bye bye all right thank you bye bye